from our little cottage right here on the shores of Lake Ontario. Uh, this is uh, where we live. We've been here for about three years and for those three years we've been slowly renovating every single bit of this cottage from the rafters to the floorboards. So um, the kitchen is the last room to do so you'll see it's a conglomeration of all different kinds of things until we find the right parts and pieces to fit in here to make it our own little cottage farmhouse kitchen. So um, we do have this nice big chunk of Formica countertop which was used actually in my sewing room at the old house. JR um, just kind of rigged it up here so that at least I had a countertop to work on. So um, I just thought that, that this would be the perfect opportunity to share with you how I do the Carrera Marble stamp technique to um, create that faux marble finish using Iron Orchid Designs Carrera Marble Stamp. So these are some of my sample boards that I did. I'm going to be actually redoing this entire counter. I'm going to start tonight uh, by doing some prep work. I'm going to sand it down completely with my palm sander and sandpaper. I'm going to wet sand it so I don't have as much of a mess. And then I'm going to clean it really well. And then I'll be using um, Fusion Mineral Paint Ultra Grip. It's a bonding agent that will help my base coat of Fusion Mineral Paint casement adhere to that countertop right there because it's a slippery surface, it's that laminate glossy surface. I want to sand it well and I want to use a bonding agent so that my paint really holds tight. So um, once I put the bonding agent on in a little while I will be um, letting that sit overnight and tomorrow afternoon we'll be ready to put our first uh, coat of casement on it. Okay, so I finished sanding and I have knocked down some of the gloss on this countertop and now I'm going to give it a good cleaning with TSP. I am going to now do this entire surface with my sea sponge casement paint mixed with clear glaze. I just want to get this white kind of sponged on there to give it an underlying texture just a little bit. All right, we have sponged the entire surface here with casement paint and the clear glaze. And all that does is it lays down a nice transparent thin texture um, over the existing countertop that I had pre-painted. So now we're going to get into the fun stuff. Um, I have always said with transfers, you kind of have to think outside the transfer. And it's the same with the Career Marble Stamp. You can certainly use it just like this. But what I want to do is as I lay the base coat underneath, um, I'm going to actually be taking some of these stamps off and using them in random patterns so it doesn't look so stamped on. Um, so I'm going to actually remove a few of these and start to get a pattern going. Um, and, and it's more a like a, an underlying base for the stamp. For the for the marble technique um, what I've done is I have mixed a very very pale gray with my white paint and again you can use whatever paint you like my best advice is whatever you're using do those sample boards so that you learn the technique and you learn what works best for you and your paint products um, I have mixed a really pale gray. And this is also mixed with a good amount of clear glaze. The reason I use the clear glaze in this is 
so that it provides a little bit of transparency to the paint and it also gives me a little more working time with the paint. It slows down that dry time just a little bit and I'm not going to get a build up of just layers and layers of my matte paint. Okay, I've laid it on. I'm kind of tickling the surface of it. I don't need a complete perfect impression of every detail of this stamp. And I'm going to lift it. Now I'm going to come back with my, um, actually my paper towel, and I'm going to start blotting this out. And twisting and turning this as I go. Okay, so I'm going to do another layer. I hope it's not looking too dark in this corner. Again, I'm going to be putting so many different layers on this that it doesn't matter. The most important thing is to keep those veins running in the same direction. And I'm going to lift. I'm going to take my paper towel. This is a damp shop cloth. I want to create a whole background of this pretty overall pale pale gray marble. See where my paint is built up here? <clears throat> That's, I don't want that. I want to make sure that I really blend that out. I don't need this over my entire piece. I do want to leave some blank spaces because I want it to look random. I don't want it to look like it's stamped. I have taken some of my white paint that I started with, the casement, and I mixed a little bit of my pale gray mix into it to get even a lighter gray. I rearranged my stamps on here to use a few different ones, kind of give it a little variety. And now I'm going to go ahead and continue to stamp my marble. Like I really think that it's it's critical with this to work with different variations of the same color so that it doesn't look intentional. I think what we'll do is I'm gonna get that right up to I'm gonna wrap the edge even. Coming from this one, it's much lighter. Oh, wow. I'm kind of in love with this. Maybe I'm going to want to do my entire kitchen with faux marble instead of using antique artwork. I want to start coming back over what I've already done to begin to create another layer of interest here. Okay. So what I don't want, I don't want to do so much of this that it looks like it was just sponged on. Kind of be deliberately random in how I position my stamp. That's why I'm using different arrangements too of the individual parts of the Carrera Marble stamp. Okay, we have uh, laid down several layers of our Carrera Marble stamp using gradients of light gray and um, it looks really beautiful as it is. When you look at it from a distance, it's pretty, it's pretty cool, actually. But um, now I'm gonna show you how to get some of this darker veining that you see here, that you typically see in true marble. I have my mix here that was that pale gray that I used with some white. And it also has um, the clear glaze in it. That's what I've been working on all along to create those layers. And then um, now I'm going to add even a little bit more ash. I'm just going to 
pour a little bit out here on my board. And I'm just going to start to mix now a deeper shade of gray. We've cleaned up all of our stamps and um, I'm just going to choose this really thin, this little thin strip right here is going to be the one that I'm going to work on with first. Uh, but as we, as we take a look at this, um, I'm going to try to decide where I want the darker veining. So um, I'm not going to run a dark vein through every one of these kind of marbled patterns, but I think I want to do something here and then maybe do something here with some... A, a shift that comes across. We'll see. We'll kind of play with that and see see how that works out. I've mixed up a gray here, um, kind of a medium gray, and then I've also added just a touch more of the ash. This is um, a blending extender. This is an acrylic medium that you add to paint to give it a longer drying time it's, it's used for blending. I love this. Again, it adds even more transparency than the glaze did. Um, and um, will give me even more blending and drying time. Again, there's so many different brands of this, so whatever one you're using, just use your manufacturer's instructions and um, go with it. Practice. Practice on those practice boards. Okay, I'm going to run a darker, I'm going to start running that darker vein. I just see a little bit of a, are we right? I kind of see a little bit of a V that was formed here, and I think that that's where I want to do a dark vein. So... is really kind of harsh looking at first but it's all going to blend out I haven't even uh, added more paint until right now onto my stamp this is probably not a good idea <laughs> I'm going to be working right on here <laughs> I'm going to come with my paper towel and I'm going to start blending. I'm going to take a dry, very soft brush and I'm just lightly brushing over this. And that softens that dark vein even more. I'm even going on the um, on my finger. I'm kind of running along. To give this even a little more definition. And I'm always stepping back to kind of get a perspective of it. But I think I like it. Okay, I've pulled out another of the marble stamp sections because what caught my attention is this little, this little ridge right through here. And um, I kind of like the way that looked. And again, I don't, I want this to be very random. You do not have to apply paint over your whole stamp. You can use parts of it. So I'm just stamping that little bit right there. Can you see that? And I'm going to maybe, let's see, I think I just want to kind of go crossways with one of these. Again, I have, I don't want to go 
nutso with this. Because if you do too much, it's going to look too crazy. But I do want to add a little bit more of that dark veining. But see how I, I just did that part. Add one more vein because it just seems like it makes sense to kind of come across here. Paper towel. This is where when you're blending this dark, dark color, it can, if you're not careful, it can look a little muddy. So you're just constantly wanting to uh, switch your paper towel around so you're not getting that deep color in places that you don't want it. We are just marveling at how they designed this stamp and made it so realistic. All right, we have ourselves a marble countertop. So um, I think that what we're going to do is we'll let this dry completely overnight. We're going to give it a good 24 to 48 hours to dry completely. Then um, we will put on probably three or four coats of a semi-gloss polycrylic. I chose that option because a polycrylic doesn't yellow and it's water-based, it's easy to work with. So um, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up here. We'll come back to you after we put that final sealer on it and um, get to see the final result. It's been a couple of weeks since we finished our faux marble countertops and I gotta tell you we are loving the results. They look awesome and um, just an added note uh, check with your paint manufacturer, whatever products you're using, you're going to want to check with their specifications so that you get the very best results. Give them a good couple of weeks cure time and um, using the IOD Carrera Marble Stamp, you can get the same awesome results.